All right, we're going to check out this Beretta Nano today. Uh, this is on loan to me by my buddy Zach, so I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> this is really random, but he wanted me to find out what this was because neither of us knew what it was. So uh, after a quick scroll through the owner's manual there, uh, it looks like they show it in some of the illustrations for collecting the little pins and parts and stuff that come out of this thing apparently when you break it down so that's what they uh provide that for i was thinking it's for you to put bullets in but apparently it's for all the little parts that come out of it when you disassemble it so the nano is a six plus one capacity uh this thing was kind of popular back in the day uh for a carry gun it's a single stack obviously nine millimeter and uh, by the way we're using the pmc bronze here 115 grain around those just for practice here um extremely smooth it's probably one of the smoothest pistols i've ever felt i think the only thing that sticks out right there is your mag release which is not ambi and it's completely smooth on this side it's so smooth i can't even describe it like out of all the guns i've handled this thing is extremely smooth and um streamlined but that's the idea so there's it doesn't catch on anything uh for I don't know if they intended you to pocket carry this or what, but it's extremely smooth for concealed carry. does not have a slide lock slash slide release. So the only way to release the slide is to remove the magazine, pull it back and let it go. Or if you're still shooting, insert another loaded magazine, pull it back and let it go. Itty bitty little trigger safety there. We are empty and the trigger, I don't know. It's not, it's not a, I don't think it has a, it doesn't have the backup, no, but it pulls like a uh, double action. It's not very heavy, though. It's only about six or seven pounds. And it's just a long, smooth pull all the way back like a double action. Uh, so, again, another uh, concealed carry feature there. A lot of people like that long pull. So, especially if you're pocket carrying or even if you're not and you got it on a holster and you draw quick, you accidentally rub against that trigger, it's not going to go off because you got to pull it all the way back but what i'm liking about it uh, for me personally at least is it's not super heavy like most of those uh long pull double action triggers are uh, where they're like 9 10 12 pounds so i like that it's only like six or seven but it does have a uh, double action type travel where it's got to go all the way back long slightly heavy pull there striker fired there's your sight picture Probably a little too close there, but there you go on the site. So just a uh, white dot set up there. Pretty stable pistol, honestly. I'm holding it one-handed in with my left hand, which I shoot right-handed. Not much in the way of uh, good grip there. You can only get two fingers on it, like a small little micro 380. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit of a challenge to hang on to with that 9 millimeter recoil because you only got two fingers on it. And I don't see anything else in the box, so I don't think he would have lost anything. So... I'm assuming that means it just comes with that one flush fit six round mag there. So that's what we got. So I'll load this first mag up here then, or only mag I should say. Um, six plus one again. And uh, we'll just take some uh, test fi fire shots down there on the target. Uh, I already have some low left there uh, from the previous test. So I'm probably just going to do six o'clock on the head and see where we're hitting down there. So I know uh, where to hold. That really surprised me. Usually I'm pretty terrible with these long, long pull triggers like that because you got to like squeeze through them smooth without jerking the gun. First shot went here. Um, this is where I am pulling them. And then you can see we got two more shots right here. So uh, if I could get that trigger down, this thing is dead on and pretty accurate as well. Now, one thing I forgot to mention was um, he had issues with this before. He probably bought this, I don't know, cl getting close to a decade ago. And uh, we were having issues, I can't remember exactly what, like stove pipes or something like that. It's some sort of failure to feed, something that was jamming up. And I believe he contacted Barrett about it, and they told him to run heavier ammunition, which we did. Again, this was many years ago. So we tried the 147 grains, and if I recall correctly, they ran better, but I think we still had a few hiccups. Um, so what he did uh, 
somewhat recently. What well, I don't think he's had it out since. Um, he locked a slide back like this for a week or more to kind of break in slash loosen that recoil spring a little. Um, so the rounds would have enough power to fully cycle the slide there and not hang up. So as you can see there, we had no issues uh, prior with this light practice grade stuff. We were having a lot of uh, issues there. So I know that was the first mag, but hopefully we get through this whole box without any issues. And then that would mean she's good to go. And I think that was a common issue with these was a lot of people with the 115 grain stuff, especially, and even the 124 grain sometimes, they had those issues. And that's what Beretta recommended. Uh, that is my recollection, at least. That being that they've recommended the 140, 147 grain stuff uh, over the, the lighter loads. But um, that's something you can do with any gun. And I've had to do that with a few in my lifetime. Um, you can either sit there and put 500 rounds through it to loosen up the spring a little bit and make it a little weak. Or if you don't want to go through 500 rounds of ammunition, you can just lock the slide back for a week or two and do the same thing. Likewise, you could also just sit there and manually cycle the slide a few hundred times with your hand. All right, but we'll get her loaded up again and I'll uh, try to start knocking some steel down. If I miss at all, it's probably gonna be off to the right because we see when I'm pulling this, I am pulling off to the right. That's that long trigger pull getting me there. I always have a little bit of issue with that. Uh, I know if I shot things like this more often, I'd get better, but uh, I, I typically just stick to the single action stuff. All right, this time the slide is back, so we'll try uh, feeding it that way. No problem. <laughs> All right, so I tried to go a little faster there, and I was obviously slinging them off to the right like I said I would, so we'll slow back down again and keep working my way through that trigger smooth but before this video is over I am going to try to speed it up and see if I can work through that All right, I've tried six plus one. We got one in the chamber now, six in the magazine. Like how most people would carry it. What's going on there? That, let's see here. Yeah, that's an empty shell, so failure to eject. Not quite sure what happened there. So surprisingly, it's actually a lot easier to hold on to than I, I thought. I'm not really having any issue with only having those two fingers on it and it coming out of my hands at all. I got a pretty good grip on it, so... Surprisingly, it's not trying to rock out of my hand there. All right, try six plus one again, see if it cops up on us. I'll go a little faster this time. <laughs> so as you can see there, the, the faster I try to go with this thing, the worse I get, always pulling uh, low right there because that's just what these long travel triggers cause me personally to do. I know some of you are gonna rave, well, you know, more training, more experience, whatever, you just suck, but whatever, it is what it is. Like I said, I usually just go with the uh, single action crisp break triggers, and that's what I like. So I don't have to get awesome at this if that's not what I like. So uh, obviously being a review channel, um, I shoot both, um, but it's just that I don't have that much experience with these kinds of uh, the long heavy trigger pull where you gotta pull all the way through. And it just causes me to pull. So maybe one day I'll get a little better at that. But that is why it's occurring to me out there. So going faster is certainly not going to be a thing here. So for the remainder, I'm just going to... Well, I guess we only have one mag left there. 
uh, just try to knock down some more steel. I have to uh, kind of pull through it slowly and smoothly to keep myself from pulling it there. Um, but others will say, and this is 100% true, something like this is more of a up close and personal style, uh, you know, firearm uh, for self defense. In which case, the long heavy pull again, that's by design uh, for concealed carry because. Uh, that lessens the odds of you accidentally pulling the trigger and getting a uh, negligent, negligent discharge or whatever you would call it on accident, uh, a high stress situation. So uh, we're trying to shoot seven, eight yards here, almost 10, I think it actually is uh, from this table here. I think right there about seven or eight. And, uh, you know, those are small targets. If it was a person out there, I wouldn't have missed any shot. They wouldn't have been well placed shots, rapid firing, but they still would have hit them. So and that's kind of far like i said uh it would be a non-factor if they're right up in your face which is kind of what the little small pistols like these are for but yes with more experience and more training you can train out of that uh, i'm just not there yet so uh, don't let that be an indication of uh, the weapon not being desirable or whatever a lot of people love triggers like that and like i said for some of the reasons mentioned um, as i said when i didn't pull them it was hitting that neck real close over and over uh, so very accurate gun. That's just the uh, trigger 100% there causing me issues personally. So there you have it. Uh, we just had that one issue which was a failure to extract um so that's unfortunate other than that it ran pretty good but i did bring now i'm not gonna just run through this expensive hollow point ammunition here um but let's see what do i want to do here i guess i'll just go ahead and put a full mag of these through it so this is the 147 i don't think it's really going to prove anything <laughs> because uh, if the issue is because that's too light recoiling load and going a heavier bullet or plus P would solve that issue, then obviously we're not going to have an issue, but I'll just do it anyway. So we'll run uh, six of these. I have a gel test on these, which by the way, I'm doing a lot of 9mm gel tests. I do 380, 40, 45, and I'm going to do rifles and shotguns too, but I specifically uh, made a 9mm gel test playlist on the channel if you want to check out some of the gel tests. So we're going to run six of these through it. And then the HSTs, those are 147 standard pressure. These are 124 grain plus P HSTs. There's those. And I do have gel tests on both of these in that playlist I mentioned. All right, so here goes six of these Winchesters. All right, now the HSTs. So there you go. Like I said, it doesn't really prove much other than these probably just don't have quite enough recoil, which is probably why we got that one failure to extract. Um, I mean, maybe there's something going on with the extractor claw there. I'm not sure because you can see that the claw had slipped off of it. Well, I was just wrapping up the review here on the Nano and I got hit in the face there. The guy was shooting over there and I got smacked in the face. I'm assuming by uh, bullet fragments. It must have slid this way through that crack there or something i got smacked in the face but that's why you always wear uh, safety glasses out here but anyways uh so like i said that probably doesn't really prove much other than these possibly too light a recoil however uh, it's kind of odd that the uh, extractor claw slipped off of that round uh so maybe that's a potential issue there as well um but without shooting hundreds of rounds of this heavier stuff to see if it happened with this or, or not and always did happen with the lighter stuff there's no real way to know so but uh believe that's the issue is that you need to use heavier ammunition in these or plus p and you see there we ran those again i'm not going to waste all this dollar fifty two dollar shot uh, self-defense ammo here to find out but i at least ran a mag of each through you guys which by the way these barely had any more recoil like five percent more maybe these definitely had a little more, probably about 15% more than this stuff. 
that'll do her there i do like the gun i'm just not the greatest with that kind of trigger like i said uh so plus is about the gun that i really like i mean the mag's easy to load obviously the trigger with it having that long pull is actually very smooth and again as i said in the beginning not very heavy which i kind of like um, very smooth as I mentioned in the beginning so that it doesn't catch on anything I actually really do like the sight system on this pretty precise I like how that front dot isn't so large it's actually a little bit smaller than most guns there and surprisingly as I said even with only having two fingers on there it's actually not that hard to hold on to a little bit with those but not so much with the other two so that'll do it there uh, not sure how much relevance this has anymore in today today's world with uh, guns of size now holding twice the amount of ammunition uh, most people myself included have switched to something like that for the higher capacity um, but if you want to see a video on a nano in 2022 there you go you want to get yourself any of the targets you see me use including my gong there um, the earmuffs i wear uh chrono a bunch of stuff i don't have with me right now uh, anything you see in any of the videos, links in the description. If you want to support the channel, check out that thanks button under the video. But I want to thank you guys for stopping by. Uh, again, make sure you check out the 9mm gel test playlist on the channel. And I hope to see you guys on the next one.